Hello, my name is Gail Robertson, and I am at Michigan State University working on my Doctorate of Music Arts and Euphonium Performance. But prior to being here, I, was, I did my undergraduate studies at University of Central Florida, and I did my master's degree at Indiana University. I have been wanting to come back to do my doctorate for many, many years. Uh, I started my doctorate, my original doctorate, after I finished my master's back in 1989, and was given a phone call. I received a phone call. I was working at Bob's Big Boy at 8 o'clock at night till 4 a.m. working shift to work at Walt Disney World, and I left, and I played in a group there called the Two Befores. Did that for 10 years, and then when kind of thinking, trying to find the right time to go back, and I've established a reputation for myself, so finding the right university with the right teachers that were going to serve as a mentor to me versus someone who was an equal was uh, one of my biggest, you know, goals. And then I was working in the Brass Band of Battle Creek here last December, and one of the subs players was uh, Ava Erdman, who's a professor of trombone here at Michigan State as well as Phil Sender, who plays tuba in that group, and they said they had heard that I was thinking about coming back to do my doctorate. They said, come to the state. And I thought, what state? You know, I went back to my hotel, I looked it up, and it just seemed perfect. You know, I was looking at University of North Texas, I was looking at University of Alabama, and, you know, looking for places where they had great euphoniumists, and it just seemed like Michigan State was perfect. The uh, degree requirements were very reasonable. The campus is beautiful. I know so many people in Michigan, it just seemed like the perfect match. Uh, the fellowship I was, was awarded is called the University Distinguished Fellow, and uh, it was Professor Ordman that said to me, you know, you got this fellowship, maybe you could apply for that. And the first thing I thought was, fellowship? I'm a euphonium player, I don't know if I'd ever get a fellowship. They better give me the sweep in the you know, scholarship, you know. So anyway, uh, she said, I'll call you on Monday. I'll talk with Dr. David Rayall in the uh, Graduate School of Music Building, and Monday morning my phone rang. They said, we need your CV. And I applied and was given the award, uh, I would say, probably two, three weeks later, I was given the uh, offer. I, ha I was given, I think, 30 days to make my decision. I'll tell you right now, I got that email from Judith Stoddard, I believe her name was, and I said, I will email this back to you in five minutes. I printed it out, scanned it, and sent it right back. And here I am. Well, I know for a fact I probably would not be able to be here if I weren't able to have gotten this amazing fellowship at this school. Um, one of the great things about it is I'm not required to play in five different ensembles and you know me as a professional I already am to sit in an ensemble for five hours a week or who knows what when there are students here that need that opportunity is uh, I think it's more valuable for the students than me to knock an opportunity for a student to be in there so it's great I don't have to teach any classes so what's been really great about this is I haven't had to work I haven't had to do anything on the outside I can focus I'll have you know I have my first 4.0 ever and at 46 years old, my mom still gave me report card money. I got $10 an A, and I'm going to get some A's, I think, coming up here soon, I hope. But anyway, uh, I've, I've also been able to volunteer. Uh, there's a group here in town that's called the Lansing Concert Band that I have gone, and uh, they played a bunch of children's concerts here in town, one in town, and there was one, I believe, in uh, Charlotte that uh, one was at the uh, Wharton Center. With, I, it was packed. I would say there's probably 3,000, 4,000 kids in there from around the schools. And I wouldn't have had time for that. I also went to the Wharton Center's uh, Yamamoto, Yamamoto Japanese Drummers. And I went and got my, my favorite thing here is the student ID. I go up there and I got my ticket. They said, how many people in your party? And I said, one. And the guy, the guy I could see, he couldn't hardly stand it. He says, I got the best seat for you. And it was like $18, I think. It was in the dead center of the hall. Perfect. Went and saw the Japanese, or the Japanese drummers, like I said, and I saw the uh, Chinese acrobats. A bunch of different things. I've been able to really, really immerse myself into the things that are part of this community and as well as the uh, music department, which, I, like I said, my master's degree, you know, you didn't have time for anything because you're working, and my second doctorate, my first doctorate I started in Maryland, uh-uh, Bob's Big Boy, 8 o'clock at night till 4 a.m., wasn't going to any concerts, so this is great, uh, you know, and I, 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 I've enjoyed the opportunity to work with students. The students are, you know, me being here, and at first when I sat down in the first two euphonium ensemble rehearsal, I sat by one of the kids who was a freshman, and I said, oh, my name is Gail Robertson, and he goes, Oh, I know exactly who you are. And he says, I know when I met you. And then I'm in a class that I was taking uh, with uh, last semester, and there was a girl that sits right to me. Her name is Kelly Drulliard, and she's a flute player. And she says, you know, I always seem to have friends that are euphonium players. She goes, you know, I wonder if my friend will know who you are. You know, she, she asked me if I knew his name, and I didn't know who it was. And she goes, do you think he'll know who you are? And I said, probably. She goes, well, do you think? And I, probably. I kept telling her. She'll probably. She goes, well, let me text him. So the next day she comes to class. Oh my gosh, blah, 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 he can't believe I'm sitting by you, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's really fun not only to be here on the fellowship, but also to give back as being a fellow at your university. So it's great. My major professor is uh, Phil Sender. He's been teaching at this university for 30 years. 
Another thing, when I looked at Michigan State, as far as their music department goes, I looked to see what faculty had been here a long time. And he was one of them. There was also Jerry Hutchinson, who's been here 46 years. And I thought, people have been here this long, it's worth coming to. I've been teaching at universities now for 12 years as an adjunct at one school, probably five years prior to that. I was full-time at Bethune-Cookman University, and it was time to do something different. You know, I was an adjunct, and I was just was wanting something better. You know, I, it's something I've always wanted to do. I, I did not buy my college ring. You'll see no college ring. When I graduated from UCF because I thought, well, I'm going to turn around and graduate from here, and I'm going to need to buy another ring from any university. And then I thought, well, I'm not buying one from there because I'm going to get my doctorate. So in many ways, I'm back for two reasons, to get my little ticket to the party for on the wall, and I'm going to get my ring. When we were little, we had a piano, and I had a sister that played the flute. My mom played the flute. My dad played percussion. And it was kind of in our blood to be in the Pompano Beach High School's marching band, so I, I chose the saxophone. And eventually someone left the band and they needed more players, so I ended up going to tuba. And then someone graduated, it was time to play uh, the commencement music, and the melody was not in the tuba part, it was in the euphonium. Da, 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 dee, da, we know the beautiful thing. So it was in the euphonium, there I was, took on the euphonium, and here I've been ever since. Um, I've been very lucky. Uh, it's an instrument that a lot of people do not know. They tell people not to play it, don't major in it, and uh, I chose it because, probably because I was bullheaded. They said don't do it, made me want to do it even more. And I've been really lucky. I worked in the only full-time tuba euphonium quartet for 10 years at Disney. I've written probably 100 different charts for the instrument, arrangements and transcriptions. Uh, I've been on the cover of our International Euphonium and Tuba Journal. Uh, many, many things. There are pr probably three or four really great groups you can play in as a euphoniumist if you're not in the military band. And I'm in those groups. It's the Brass Band of Battle Creek. There's the Keith Bryan's new Sousa Band. And I've toured some uh, as a sub with some other groups, you know, the River City Brass Band, there's a lot of different groups, the Athena Brass Band, you name it. And I try to work my way in there somehow or another. Um, as far as my career plans, you know, everyone's asking me that, you know, and I'm kind of to the point, I don't want to answer my phone because uh, last time I answered that phone at Bob's Big Boy, <laughs> it took me away from my doctorate. And I was at University of Maryland at that point with Brian Bowman. And, much different scene because as you notice I was working at Bob's Big Boy at 8 o'clock at night till 4 a.m. Now that I'm on this fellowship I don't have to do that so it's a, a much better environment for me. As far as where I go from here I don't know. You know I want to find somewhere that's uh, probably the, a, a nice location that I'd like to live in. I don't want to, I'm not at this stage of my life, I don't want to hop around from school to school and make people waste their time doing searches. My house was paid for in Orlando, it was just a perfect time to come away and uh, don't know that I want to go back to Orlando or not, who knows.